Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Esme seeks assistance from Arthur, Joss confronts Adam's father, and Sam informs Carly of Drew's changes. Laura arrives in the hospital to visit Cyrus. Cyrus explains that his meeting with Sonny lead him to a realization. He provoked Sonny at the church, but he has let go of his anger and only wants peace. Laura wonders why he called her so early in the morning. He claims he called her because there is a lost soul in need of her assistance. Spencer steps in, and Cyrus says he is right on time. Laura inquires what is going on. Cyrus claims he received a visitor last night, who was desperate and alone. Spencer knows it was Esm, and Laura wants to know what's going on. Spencer reveals that he saw his father last night. Laura is surprised to find Nicholas was in town, but did not see her, and she questions why he risked returning to Port Charles. Spencer claims Nicholas came to kidnap Ace, and he allowed him. Laura is shocked, but Spencer insists Ace was not safe with Esm. Laura said Esm has shown to be a terrific mother. She wonders why Esm came to Cyrus. Cyrus stated that she assumed he still had powerful contacts. Laura can't believe Spencer did this, or that he could steal a baby from the only family he knows. Spencer swears Esm lied to them and remembers everything. He reveals that she used to call him Spence before she lost her memory. He acknowledges that he told Esme that if she went to the police, he would press the old allegations against her. Laura can't believe he gave Ace to Nicholas on a hunch and without any concrete evidence. Cyrus interrupts and asks whether Esme would come to him for aid, who else would she turn to, and what she will do if she discovers Nicholas. Laura believes they should call the police, but Spencer disagrees. Laura claims Ace is safer with them, and she wonders why he didn't tell her about his worries. They might have gone to the police about Esm, and Ace should be with them after everything with the youngster and his parents is resolved. Spencer believes Ace is safer with his father. Laura claims Spencer and Nicholas have both made poor decisions, and with Nicholas on the run, the baby has never been in greater risk. Spencer believes Esm's visit to Cyrus demonstrates that she is still as dangerous as she was before. Laura phones Dant to report Ace's kidnapping. Adam wakes up, and Willow explains that he is at GH because his friend saved his life. She inquires whether he remembers anything from yesterday night. He claims he drank heavily, and she claims he also took medications. Adam claims they were for a cold, and he wants to go back to his dorm. Willow reminds him that he needs to be cleared first, and that he is fortunate to be alive. Adam says, lucky me. Dex discovers Joss in the hospital chapel. He learned what happened from R.A. Kylie, and wished she had phoned him to be there for her. She believes she should go check on Adam and apologize to him. Dex believes that only his parents should apologize to him. Joss recognizes Adam needs assistance. He continues, and a good friend, which is what you've been. Back in Adam's room, Portia arrives to check on him. Adam asks when he can leave, and Willow excuses herself. Adam claims yesterday night was a miscommunication, and his friend Joss simply overreacted. He would prefer to be signed out. Portia knows Joss, and neither she nor her staff overreact. She adds it is hospital policy that he be assessed by a psychiatrist before leaving. Adam discovers Portia is Trina's mother and tries to use that to get away, but she insists they follow process. She claims he must be diagnosed, and they cannot allow him leave if it is proven he poses a threat to himself or others. When she mentions his parents, he flips out. Portia claims she had to phone his parents, and he wants to know what she told them. Portia claims he is over 18, and that they cannot discuss what happened without his permission, but his parents will have questions. She asks him to be honest with the doctor who will evaluate him, as well as with his parents and himself. Portia departs and inquires of Willow about the psychiatrist. She says he'll be down shortly. They talk about Adam's pressure when his father, Steve Mize, arrives and asks to see him. Dex and Joss enter and overhear Adam's father calling his son a fool, 
one who made a fool of himself and spent the money. Portia says she'll check on the attendees who need to see Adam. Joss rushes up to Portia, explaining that Adam cannot leave. Adam's father inquires as to her knowledge of the situation and his son. Joss claims Adam has been hiding everything from him due to the pressure he's under. Adam's father claims Adam got great grades and was on his way to a top-tier medical school, but he's throwing everything away to party. Joss claims he isn't partying, he's experiencing panic episodes and self-medicating. Adam's father informs Joss that this does not concern her. She says Adam attempted suicide last night, which should concern him. According to Joss, Adam is so terrified of him that he would prefer avoid him. Adam's father accuses Joss of lying and threatens to sue if she comes within 50 feet of him. Portia informs Adam's father that Joss is going and takes him to her office for a conversation. Willow and Dex persuade Joss to go, while Dr. Robinson hopes to contact his father. Joss agrees to depart but checks in on Adam first. Esm shows up at Ava's gallery and begs her not to kick her out since she needs her aid. Ava asks what she wants and spits it out. Esm asks if she has seen Nicholas. Ava wonders why she is asking. Esm screams, because he kidnapped my son. Esm adds that while she was in court, Nicholas visited Laura's apartment and Spencer handed over Ace to him. She assumed she and Spencer were getting along, and Spencer allegedly despised his father. Ava believes that fathers are like sons, both self-serving. Ava understands what it's like to be separated from your child, but she wants to know what Esm believes she can do for her. Esm believes Nicholas may have come to see her. Ava confesses he was present, but he's gone, and she'll never find him. Esm questions Ava about if she assisted Nicholas in kidnapping her son, but she denies it. She claims Nicholas is a Cassadine, has riches, and she will not find him. Esm adds that she has resources and a deadly ally of her own. Ava chuckles, who? Esm reveals that it's Cyrus. Ava claims she must be joking, but Esm insists Cyrus is still Ace's family. When Ava asks what Cyrus promised her, she confesses that he promised her nothing. She breaks down and hurries out, claiming she is all alone in this situation. Sam walks by Bobby's, where Carly is interviewing candidates for assistant manager. Carly offers to fetch Sam something, but she says she's waiting for Drew. Carly says she will be waiting a long time for Drew. Sam acknowledges she and Drew have been out of sync lately, and she organized this meeting to try to work through these concerns. Sam believes things have been tense since he returned home from Pentonville. Sam asks Carly if she has noticed Drew's changes since his return. Carly says Drew is struggling after his experience in Pentonville, and just as he was recovering his bearings, they discovered Nina had called the SEC on them, and her mother had died. Drew, according to Sam, appears upset with the world as a whole, rather than just Nina. Carly says she's trying to move on while also honoring her mother's memory. She thinks her mother gave people second opportunities, and that's what they should give Drew. Sam states that if there is anything she can do to aid Drew, she will consider her suggestions. They discuss Drew's decision to go to prison to protect Carly, and Carly says that's why she's committed to help him get through this. Nina comes at Crimson to find her office being packed up by movers. She proclaims that she is calling security, but one of the movers says they are doing their job. She wants to know who ordered this. Drew walks in and tells Nina what he did. She scoffs, saying he can't order her out of her own office. He argues that this is a commercial matter, as he owns Aurora and Aurora owns Crimson. However, she is dismissed. Nina claims he made a mistake, and she refuses to accept it. She claims Michael still runs Aurora, and he is a businessman who understands that without her, the magazine will fail. She established Crimson as one of the country's top fashion magazines and Aurora's flagship title. She wonders what kind of father would trash his firm when his daughter is a key shareholder. Drew, angry, warns Nina not to bring his daughter into this. Drew wonders whether he has ever done anything to her to justify what she did to him. She claims this was all about Carly, and she did not want him to go to prison. 
He claims she was determined to retaliate against Carly, and her insecurity is at the root of this. He believes she despises Carly's tight relationships with Wiley, Amelia, Willow, and even Sonny. Nina believes he must accept responsibility because he stepped up to save Carly when he was not required to. Nina tells Drew to speak with legal. He can't fire her, and without her, there is no magazine. Drew says he knows and doesn't care. He'll do everything to make her pay. She claims that he is willing to close the magazine and lay off employees in order to retaliate against her. Drew claims it is her fault, and Crimson, and all of its employees are out of business unless she files a formal document acknowledging her termination. Drew walks out, and Nina notices a photo of herself, Willow, and the kids in a box. Drew returns and asks what she has decided. She signs the paper to save the magazine and its staff, even if it means giving up everything she has built. Drew brags that Crimson was never in danger, that he isn't foolish, and that Crimson will be oak without her. She claims the magazine is nothing without her. Does he believe he can keep the photographers, designers, and editorial staff? She cries that she is irreplaceable, but Drew admits that he has already replaced her. Carly enters and grins at Nina. On the next general hospital, Esm turns to Heather. Laura speaks with Dante. Brooke, Lynn, and Chase request a favor from Gregory. Tracy and Scott fight it out. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.